Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to take a look at a technique I'm calling bidirectional displace. So what do I mean by bidirectional displace? Basically, it's just a displace that happens in two directions at once. So here I've set up a background gradient that is going to drive this bump map, which is Motion's version of the displace filter, the displace effect, and I've set it to horizontal and vertical scale just to make this more obvious. So now if I adjust the horizontal scale, you can see that the more white there is, the more displacement happens. But over here where there's black, there's no displacement at all. But what's happening is it's only displacing towards the white, and that's because the black is a is the neutral color. Whereas if we look at what happens in After Effects, I've basically set up exactly the same thing. And here in After Effects, the displacement effect is actually called displacement, which is a little bit helpful. So if I adjust the horizontal displacement, you'll see that actually it goes in two directions at once, and that's really nice. And the reason for that is that instead of black being the neutral color, that's not affected. It's actually mid-gray that's the neutral color. So you'll notice that where it's mid-gray, there's much less distortion. And the more we go to either black or white, then there's more. And basically what the filter is doing is it's saying for any values above mid-gray, displace them in one direction. And for any values below mid-gray, displace them in the opposite direction. So this is the effect that I want us to create today. So I've set up a new project. It's 1080 by 1350, which is obviously social media 4x5. And the frame rate is 24 frames a second, and the duration is three seconds. But really, you can go with, with any kind of dimensions you like. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type some text. So here is my text. I've used Futura Bold and made it nice and big and adjusted it so it all sits nicely within my frame. So then let's set up the gradient that is going to drive this. So I'm going to make a new group, and into that group, I'm going to add a gradient. So come to Generators and look for Gradient. So let's open up the gradient here. So what we're going to do is, first of all, set up the start and end positions. So bearing in mind our width is 1080, we want negative 540 for X, 0 for Y, positive 540 for that X end, and 0 for the Y end. And then we do want to set up these colors. So this one here on the right, I'm going to make that black by doing 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 for its hex number. And for the white, I'm going to type FF, FF, FF for hexadecimal white. Or you could use any other way of making black and white. So then we can turn this off. What we're going to do is we're going to apply our displace to this text group. And the important thing is to switch it to fixed resolution, otherwise it won't look right. So let's come over to filters and distortion and grab the bump map displace filter. And let's switch to horizontal and vertical scale because it makes life a lot easier to understand. I'm going to zero out that vertical scale because we want to just look at left and right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this group containing the gradient to the source well. And you can already see how something is starting to happen there. And that displace that we talked about is working. So it's displacing towards the white. As you can see, the white is over on the left. The black is being unaffected. So what we want to do is we want to displace in the other direction as well. And to do that, I'm going to make a clone of this group. So right click and make clone layer. So now I've got two groups and I've just quickly renamed those. So the first group is called Displace A and the second group is called Displace B. So we want this second gradient to drive the displacement in the opposite direction. And to do that, there are a number of different ways in which we could simply mirror it. So rotate it through 180 degrees on Y or scale it negative 100 on X or apply a flop filter or anything like that. But because what I want to show you later on is how we can use other things than just gradients for this technique, what I'm actually going to do is invert it. But before we do that, I want to show you another little trick that we're going to be using here. 
Let's quickly turn off that second gradient and turn back on our original one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this gradient here and I want to turn it into stripes. So it's rather not just a, a uniform gradient, it's kind of bands. And there's a kind of interesting way we can do that. And that's by coming to filters and stylize and pixelate. Now the value we want here is 97. And I've just done that by trial and error really, but you see that we don't actually want that sort of effect of the, the gradient sort of shrinking in. And you know, if you want to if you want to kind of thinner stripes, you again you just have to be careful that you're filling the frame. Just just select your scale appropriately. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to be using this look. So let's again just turn off that gradient and you can see how that has changed the way this works. Instead of getting that stretching, we're getting sort of these nice little sort of glassy bands. Uh, so let's show you that. That's it's really quite quite a nice effect as you can see. So I got a little bit sidetracked there, but what I actually want to do, as I say, is for this clone, this, this displaced B, to be going in the opposite direction. And the way I want to do that, as I say, is to invert the image. And this comes with its own set of problems, and I want to explain those. So let's first of all add colour and negative. Now let's have a look at these two gradients. So here's our original gradient, and you can see we've got a fairly even distribution of white to black, and sort of mid-grey is kind of in the middle. But if we look at our inverted version, mid-grey is way off to the left here, so it isn't actually a perfect inversion at all, and we need to fix that. So I just want to make a little bit of a detour here to explain what's happening and how to fix it. So in this instance, I've got the gradient cloned and it's sitting on the top and I've flipped it through negative 100 on X in order to get it going the other way. So what we'd expect is that applying the negative filter would make it look like this. So let's try that. So filters and color and negative. And again, you can see the problem is that the, the mid gray is like way off to the side. It should be in the middle, but it's off to the side. So to fix that, we are going to do a gamma conversion and then convert it back again. So come to color and select the gamma, and I'm gonna pop that below the negative, and I'm going to enter a value of 2.2. And then I'm going to duplicate it, right click duplicate, move it above the negative. So we're converting back this time. And to convert back, we need to have a value of 0.4545. And that is basically 1 over 2.2, which was our original number. So we've converted into one gamma space and then converted back out of it. And I think you can see that although the result is not now perfect, it's a lot better than where we started out. So let's bypass those two gamma filters and see what it did look like. They look like that, but if we turn them back on again, the mid greys are more or less matching up. There's a slight discrepancy, but for the purposes of what we're actually doing here, that's more than good enough. So that's what we're going to do in our main project. So again, to this layer here, the one with the, the negative already on it, we're going to come to filters, color, and gamma. We're going to drop that below the negative. We're going to set the gamma value to 2.2. We're going to duplicate it. We're going to move it above the negative and set the value to 0.4545. And now if we compare these two, you can see they look similar. So a little bit complicated and I don't want to go into any more detail about it here. It's probably something that might be worth going back to for another tutorial because it's all a bit sciencey. Anyway, let's turn both of these displaced groups off and let's actually get to work on our main effect. Now you'll remember that I used horizontal and vertical scale for my bump map and that actually unfortunately doesn't uh, for some strange reason work with this or there's loads of kind of glitches and problems that you'll encounter if you do try to use this. So I'm actually going to delete this rather than modifying it and I'm going to add a new one. So filters, distortion and bump map and we're going to use the default and let's use displace A and let's set this direction to negative 90. And then we can use the amount slider like that to control the direction. 
So negative one is obviously pulling us off to the left like that, which is good. So in order to get it going the other way, we can simply duplicate this bump map filter. So I'm going to call that bump map A and right click duplicate, call it B, and then use the displace B as the source. And what we need to do here is we need to have the amount going in the opposite direction. So one, you see that goes off in the opposite direction. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to link this amount to the bump map A amount. So let's zero them both out. Let's select this one. Let's right click, add parameter behavior link. Let's select the group. which has got our filter in it that we want to link to. Filters, bump map A and amount. And to get it going the opposite direction, we're going to set that scale to negative one. So now if we come back to our bump map A filter, you'll see we get our two-way displace. And that's great. So I'm going to set that value to zero. I'm going to come to 112 on the timeline, which is halfway through. I'm going to keyframe it. I'm going to come to the start and let's set a negative value sufficient to get everything cleared off the screen. So that's negative 3.3, I think. And let's come to the end and have, again, negative 3.3 for the displaced value. And then we get... Now, what we really want is for it to hold a little bit longer in the middle and not bounce away quite so quickly and sharply. And we can do that by coming to the amount here right click show in keyframe editor select that middle keyframe and select ease both and you can see that that's a little bit smoother and we're getting that little bit more of a hold in the middle and obviously you can adjust those keyframes to taste but i'm not going to get too carried away here because there's quite a bit more i want to still want to show you so the first thing i want to show you is that we can do some pretty cool stuff by adding filters to this first gradient so, for example, we could come to stylize and half tone, and you can see that that's that's really quite nice. Probably need to sort of kind of keyframe it in or out. Could obviously change the scale of it, but I think uh, you know that kind of nice sort of dusty look is quite good. Anyway, you could do that. Another thing you could do is come to distortion and glass block, and that kind of creates a little bit more interest as well. So. Lots you can do there to make that quite interesting. So the other thing I want to show you in addition to that is how we can get it to go up and down instead of left to right. So let's come back to our bump map A and let's set the direction to be zero for both. Probably a good idea just to link the B to the A. So let's do that. Let's link that B direction. So add parameter behavior, link, select the group, drop it in there select filters, bump map A and direction. And now we can control it all from the A value here. And you can see now that we're going up and down like this, and that's also nice. But I think what one would want to do in this case is actually to have the start and end in a different place. So we've got negative 3.3 for the start, which actually isn't enough because we actually need to clear this frame. So let's go for uh, negative 10, which is actually the furthest we can go in actual fact. And let's come to our last keyframe and set that to positive 10. And so now what we get is that, which is really nice. As I say, you'd, you'd probably want to kind of like massage that hold position a little bit more, but I'm not, I'm not going to get carried away here too much with that. And what else did I want to show you? I wanted to show you that we can actually use other things other than gradients and it'll work. So let's come to the library and let's come to generators and let's grab clouds and bring that in there. And again, let's add the pixelate to the clouds. So I'm just going to drag it off the gradient there. And you can see now that we're getting this kind of glitchy displacement from the clouds generator. So as you can see, this is an extremely versatile effect. I'm just going to add that pixelate back to the gradient, turn off the clouds, and let's just, just uh, add some a background. Let's come into color solid. Let's make this something nice. And let's select this group here. Let's come to filters and stylize and fill. And again, let's select a nice color for this. 
and there's our effect. So just a couple more things I want to point out before we finish. If you didn't want this stripy look, you could just very simply turn off the pixelate and you'd get this sort of much more wave-like effect. And that's kind of interesting as well. And you could add to it, again, a stylized filter. Let's try hatched screen. And again, it needs a bit of work to make it look just right, but it's kind of pretty interesting as well. So very, very customizable, as you can see. There's so much more that you could play with. There's just one final little trick that I wanted to mention, and I think it's quite a useful one. And that's that we can come back to the master gradient and we can add more gradient steps. So what I'm going to do is hold down the option key, drag that black one along to make a copy of it. Select the white one and drag that along like that to make another copy of it. Hit this bottom little switch here, which evenly distributes the tabs. And then you'll see that we've got this even more interesting effect where we've actually got effectively four columns of displacement because we've added those extra tabs and you could go on adding more tabs if you wanted to make it get even more fancy but I think that's probably enough and I've just undone that and I just want to point out the final thing which is that if we grab this middle control here you can see that value down here in fact it's a slider like that we can create a different profile for how this this two-way displace is actually happening so you can see we've now got this sort of more of a, of a wave to it because we've displaced that off to the side. And we could even think about keyframing that. So if we come to the first frame, set that maybe to 20%, keyframe it there, come to the last frame, set it to 80%, so it's the other way, we end up with this. So it's a slight variation. We've got a little bit of that sort of wave action going on and it's alternating in direction. So that's the tutorial. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.